Hello and welcome to another Notch tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to look at the Freeze Geometry node. So this node has been made because it's a great optimization tool for real-time projects, such as virtual production. I'm going to bring the Freeze Geometry node out. And I'm going to bring it into the scene. The best time to really use the Freeze Geometry node is right at the end of your project when you put it together you've got all the baked lighting nodes working all the materials are on your objects and you want to optimize so you bring in the freeze geometry node you render everything down to fewer objects so the freeze geometry node doesn't have many attributes and it's only got a couple of inputs on it now it's very simple to set up you connect it to the root node you select a bunch of 3d objects you want to pipe into it you drag them and pipe them into the geometry sources input on the geometry node. And once you've done that, it will automatically generate a single mesh for all of these objects. Now this scene has been built using lots of modular pieces, a bit like Lego, and it's a great way of creating a scene that's very flexible and easy to create what you want quickly. But the problem with that is you have an overhead of multiple 3D objects and lots of nodes on the node graph, which contribute to a decrease in performance in the GPU and the CPU. So the freeze geometry, it will take all of these objects and it will create one mesh. So effectively, none of these are now being drawn on the node graph or within the scene. It's all going through the freeze geometry. The other thing is you no longer need to have the bake lighting attached to these objects. So I'll delete those. And again, that is a huge overhead of nodes in the node graph removed. So now the freeze geometry is drawing all of these objects. You can see that it no longer has reflections and that's because the freeze geometry node isn't piped into the screen space reflections. So I'll pipe that in there. So now you have reflections on the scene. The great thing about the freeze geometry node is it's not a destructive pass on your scene. If you want to add more objects to the scene or you want to move these objects about, you turn the freeze geometry off. You move your object to where you want it. So I'm going to put an object up here just to show you it working. I'm also going to copy paste that object, connect it to the root, and I'm going to add it to the geometry. And this object obviously hasn't got any of the materials, so I'm going to add the materials back on as well. So I've added an object and I've moved an object. And then when I turn the freeze geometry back on, it renders both those objects and you see the reflections. So that's all working nicely. All these objects are now rendered as one, but there's no baked lighting. All the lighting is real time. So I want to bake the lighting on this. I'll bring in a baked lighting object as normal. And instead of connecting it to the 3D objects, this connects directly to the freeze geometry node. Obviously, all of these objects have their own unique UV space. And if we bake them all as one, you'd expect them all to be baked on top of each other. But that's not what happens with the freeze geometry node. The freeze geometry node actually distributes them so they all have their own space on the light map texture. So I'm going to turn on ray tracing and I'm going to render the lights again. If you saw that, I'll show you the rendered light map texture. It has packed all the light maps into the freeze geometry light map so that all of the light maps have their own unique UV space. Obviously, when you do this, you've got 10 objects now taking up the space of one UV texture. So you need to up your texture size on your actual light map. So I'd probably use a three or 4K texture now for all those light maps. But what the freeze geometry node has done is remove the need to have any baked light map nodes on any of these 3D objects because you only need one on the freeze geometry. And by doing so, it's saved the overhead of all the other baked lighting nodes. So now let's move on to these other objects. So these objects are all the external floor planes and I'm going to do exactly the same to those. So I'm going to get a freeze geometry node. I'm going to bring it into the scene. I'm going to delete all the baked lighting. I'm going to select the 3D objects, pipe them into the 
geometry sources on the freeze geometry node. And then I'm going to connect the freeze geometry node up to the root node. That has immediately combined all those objects into one geometry source. Now I want to bake the lighting on these objects. So I'll get a bake lighting to object node, bring it into the scene, connect the bake lighting to the freeze geometry, turn on ray tracing, and then bake the lighting. And again, it divided all the light maps between those objects there, and it has baked them as one. So again, you are saving, taking all these 3D object nodes, all the bake lighting nodes that are associated to them, and turn them into four nodes on the node graph, which is a huge improvement of performance and overhead of 3D objects on the GPU and nodes in the node graph for the CPU. So it's a massive performance saving tool. Another thing to understand when you freeze the geometry like this is that the hierarchy on the node graph is quite important. If you take your 3D meshes and swap the order on the node graph, re-renders everything into a 3D object, you can see that all the bake lighting is broken. And the reason it's broken is the bake lighting on each of these objects gets drawn in a specific order, depending on where they are on the node graph. So if you swap the order, this light map is exactly the same, but the geometry has now been lined up in a different order. So they won't match and you'll have a broken light map. So if you do change the order of your objects in the scene, you need to re-render your light map. So I'm going to turn my lighting on. I'm going to turn ray tracing on and bake out another light map. And now the light maps look good again and are working again. So it's really important if you do have errors with your light maps, it's probably because you've changed the order of your 3D meshes on the node graph. So the freeze geometry, when you update it, when you change anything, it's very simple to get it to work again. You literally toggle it on and off deselect the object and you'll see that all of these have the freeze icon which means they've been re-rendered again. I'll select a couple of the objects. I'm going to delete them out of the scene. Toggle my freeze geometry on and off. The objects disappear. The light map is reordered and it's been reordered between eight 3D meshes now rather than ten. So to make that work again, I have to turn my ray tracing back on and rebake the lighting. And there you go. It's a really simple workflow. It works really well. It's very easy to set up. It's a massive optimization help. So it's a very important node to use. And if you look at my node graph, you can see that I must have 50 uh, 3D objects in the scene, and they've been reduced down to less than a dozen freeze geometry nodes. It's a huge improvement performance wise. Thank you for listening to this Notch tutorial, and I look forward to seeing you in the next Notch tutorial.